Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video. I know right, we're hot off the heels of my Juna uh, KSP 1.5 patch scatterer update video where I said oh, I'm not going to do that many KSP 2 videos guys until 4 Science comes out and yet here we are doing yet another KSP2 video because I neglected to showcase the addition of grid fins in my most recent KSP2 video. So obviously patch 1.5 or whatever it's called just came out and it added grid fins. Specifically you've got Falcon 9 style grid fins and you've got Starship style grid fins. Well I guess Starship slash BFR style grid fins are the old kind so they retract and they're not uh, rectangular in shape. They're kind of like a hexagon-ish style. They're like a squarish hexagon shape. But regardless, it doesn't matter because that's not the grid fins we're showcasing today. I wanted this to be a nice sort of quick video, so we're going to go ahead and recreate a Falcon 9 to so use the Falcon 9 style grid fins. I'm going to differentiate my rocket slightly in that we have six grid fins so that although it's aesthetically kind of close to the Falcon 9, if anyone makes any comments saying I got something wrong, we're absolved because it's different. E.g. it's a Falcon 2, not a Falcon 9, there's only two engines. And there we are, blasting off from Kennedy Space Center, Launch Complex 39A, because of course I've got the Crew Dragon on top with a pseudo solar panel ring underneath it. I think generally I got the color scheme fairly close to the Falcon 9 Block 5 with the Crew Dragon at the top. Crew Dragon, just a bit cooler than a, than a fairing, isn't it? So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a fairly short one, but I don't know. I had a lot of fun making it, and hopefully maybe the short form punchy content. This was a theme in my last commentary. See, they, they rhyme, right? In the, oh, short form content does better on YouTube. So maybe this can be my channel's path to redemption. Who knows? Anyway, I planned to detach the lower stage once we hit about 900 meters per second of delta V remaining, which of course is where we are now. I aimed for 900 meters per second of delta V, 20,000 meter periapsis. So that's kind of where we are now. So we're going to do a quick save and then, yep, that's right. I'm afraid it's the, uh, the old school way of recovering Falcon 9 stages and that we just sort of cheat it. So we make a quick save right when we detach the lower stage. Then we coast our way to orbit to do whatever we want. And then we quick load back to that point of initial stage separation. And then we go ahead and land the Falcon 9 first stage. Now, I know you guys are all itching to see me use the grid fins and those large landing legs, which, of course, are very prone to crack and attacks. Is that foreshadowing? Maybe it is. So I know you want me to just cut to the chase and land the first stage. So we're not going to do our entire crew dragon mission at this point in time. We're just going to get to orbit or get to space, not even to orbit. Quick load and land the first stage and then go ahead and carry on with our crew dragon mission. So as you can see, our second stage is almost out of fuel. I'm not going to be circularizing with this second stage. We're just going to get our apoapsis to 100 kilometers, and then we can do the rest of the mission in space with this, the third stage of the Falcon 9. But we're not going to do too much with this third upper stage. I'm just going to make sure the engine works and that, you know, we are cleared from the second stage of the Falcon 9. And then we can go ahead and load a quick save and get to landing that Falcon 9. But what the devils? As you can see from this very brief montage of me attempting to load various different quick saves, every single time I respawned the rocket, the landing legs just detached every single time. So I realized that if I wanted to showcase me recovering the first stage of this rocket, I would need to do the whole mission again and try and land it without being able to use any quick saves. I did decide that since we're launching from the very beginning again, to take advantage of things by adding a probe core to the Falcon 9 between the uh, crew dragon and the parachute so that when we do the recovery, we're not actually killing any Kerbals in the process by leaving them to just you know, rocket off into oblivion on that upper stage there. So maybe this was all for the best and we don't end up killing any space frogs in the showcasing of my Falcon 9 first stage recovery. And speaking of the Falcon 9 first stage recovery, it is well underway. I detached the upper stage at roughly the same sort of parameters as it was before. So again, apoapsis of 20 kilometers, that was the main thing. And then roughly 900 meters per second of delta V. I can't remember exactly what it was when I detached the lower stage on this attempt, but it's around that sort of ballpark. And then we can get to recovering. Uh, the Falcon 9 has entered somewhat of a spin just there. I mean, really, I shouldn't call it the Falcon 9, right? I should call it the uh, the Falcon 2, 
because that would be more accurate. For anyone that doesn't know, uh, SpaceX's Falcon 9 is named because of the fact it has nine Merlin engines. And it's named after the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. So that's why the Falcon 9 is called the Falcon 9, for anyone that didn't know that already. Interestingly though, there was an air-launched variant of the Falcon 9 designed but never built. It only had five engines. It would have launched from the Strata launch vehicle. Uh, but it was never built. But it was still called the Falcon 9, so I don't know. Make of that what you will. Anyway, here we are! Landing our Falcon 9 slash Falcon 2, but oh no! I missed the landing zone somewhat. So I thought, no matter. Hoppy managed it. I'll manage it as well. We'll do a quick hop to the center of the landing zone and all shall be well. After all, you know, this Falcon 9 can hover unlike the real one. It is superior to SpaceX's mediocre design but I sort of messed things up and it bounced and then I crashed and then attempting to load a previous quick save to try and stealthily edit things so it looked like I got it right first time well you know how this goes everything just fell apart so I realized we gotta do things properly we've got to land in the middle of the landing zone right so I gotta launch all over again but I don't want this video to be too repetitive right so we're gonna pause things there for a second and do the crew dragon mission and then we shall do another attempt at landing the falcon 9 first stage but this time landing it in the center of the landing zone therefore making the video more interesting because we're not showing the same thing over and over and also getting that viewer retention up we're only six minutes in that's very short for a youtube video google will not like that so i need to make sure you guys are keeping engaged I realize I say somewhat contradictory things in these commentaries. On the one hand, I say, I need to make short form content that's short and snappy, but then at the same time, ah, oh, we've got to make the video longer. So I, I, I guess I don't really know what I'm doing uh, in life generally, but YouTube as well. So yeah, I hope, I hope this has been an enjoyable ride uh, so far. Uh, for the Falcon 9 Crew Dragon mission, um, it's not going to be anything too ambitious. Just a little mun flyby, which is not beyond the realm of possibility for Falcon 9. Maybe it's more of a Falcon heavy thing, come to think of it. But regardless, Falcon can do this. So I'm just, you know, saying this is part of it. And part of me wonders if this is what Tim Dodd is eventually going to do. Just a Falcon heavy crew dragon mission. Although Falcon heavy is not crew rated. And I'd be very surprised if SpaceX goes for crew rating of Falcon heavy. But, you know, I'm just saying Falcon heavy was originally going to try and aim to be crew rated before Starship became, you know, SpaceX's number one. So, um. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I don't know. I don't know what I was trying to say with that sentence. Just disregard the last 10 seconds of commentary right there and move on to this commentary where I shall continue talking about Starship and Falcon Heavy, I guess. But yeah, I guess, you know, Starship very nearly killed Falcon Heavy. Well, even not even that. The concept of Starship nearly killed Falcon Heavy. There was like an investor meeting or some sort of big meeting in which Elon Musk was saying, oh, we're just going to cancel Falcon Heavy, actually, because Starship's nearly ready. By the way, this was before the first Falcon Heavy flies. This is like you know, before 2018. <laughs> so it was very early days. We know how long Starship's been taken thus far. It was like, oh, we'll just cancel Falcon Heavy because Starship's nearly here. Gwyn shot had to burst into that meeting and interrupt everything, saying, Elon, shut up. We have sold Falcon Heavy. Like, there are customers paying for it. It's not going to get cancelled. And what a great call. What a lady, the Gwyn Shotwell. So that's a, that, there's a fun story. Very, very, very abridged story, by the way. Don't quote that as the actual historical truth. You can just Google it or watch, I don't know, another YouTube channel that's got more accurate SpaceX history content. I don't know. Anyway, as you can see, throughout that little ramble just there, we have got to the point where I'm going to try and reattempt landing Falcon 2 <laughs> on, the, on the landing zone, but this time not aiming for like the edge. Well, okay, to be clear, the first time I did this, I wasn't aiming for the edge either, but this time I'm not aiming for the edge, and I'm hopefully not going to land on the edge despite whatever I was aiming for. So here we go. We're going to do our boost back burn first of all, so pointing retrograde on the nav ball. There we are. We're also going to cut to the map screen in just a second. There we are. And one of the things I love about KSB2 is that the fact we have a landing trajectory marker, that little red warning triangle thing. It gives us a nice impression of where we're going to land, although not hugely helpful because I can't see where the landing pads are on the map screen, but it gives us a near enough idea and then we can eyeball the rest. So here we go. 
Uh, I wasn't really aiming for any specific landing zone. So I was just like, oh, let's just aim towards the KSC. And then we get close to the ground. We can start steering ourselves. Because, yes, those grid fins are not just cosmetic. They do actually facilitate uh, the ability to steer downwards much better than the air brakes uh, could. They essentially function like wing pieces. You can actually build an, air you can build an airplane out of uh, grid fins in this game. And it will fly pretty well. But, you know, just saying that's how they perform when it comes to landing. And there we are. Selecting, I guess, landing zone four, because it's the furthest away from the VAB. I have no idea, but here we are. Touching down, okay, I admit, we're not in the center, but I'd say that's pretty close, right? Considering how big this landing zone is and how small our booster is, at least by comparison. And you know what? I realize I missed out on a great opportunity to say I deliberately aimed for this particular landing zone, because of course, this particular landing zone is physically the furthest away from the VAB, aka all of the inhabited buildings at the Kerbal Space Center. So maybe I should go ahead and re-record this commentary. But you know what? No, I will not do that because I have integrity. As well as some fantastic supporters on Patreon and my YouTube member page. Names on the left just there. But yeah, guys, this is kind of a shorter form video than I normally make. It was more just to showcase the new grid fins. But in the end, I think I had a lot of fun making this video. And I think I'm quite happy with how it's turned out, hopefully. So maybe... This was fun. You want to see more kind of shorter videos like this in addition to my normal videos. I don't know. Let me know what you thought of this video down below. I'm really curious to hear your feedback. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.